My name is Eva Diodati. Performing has always been special to me, from poetry to haunted houses and most everything in between. It's hard work being a performer, and it very rarely comes with much money. Is it, as Lady Gaga says, is it all about the applause? Am I fooling myself into believing I will become wealthy or famous? I mean, what are the chances I or anyone else will achieve fame? I guess I wonder, what's the point? That's what led me to make this documentary, which asks a simple question, why perform? My friend Sheena Carroll is a cosplayer, model, and a poet. She runs an organization in Pittsburgh called Girls Write Pittsburgh that teaches teen girls of the local neighborhoods writing techniques, including poetry. The anxiety attack is in a stabbing. It is a tight-knit stitch crumpling my heart as it beats faster, compensating for getting so small, so small, tighter grip. I just want to sink my teeth into it, release the pressure, pop the stitches, let the blood roll down my throat and soothe my needing stomach. But it doesn't calm it. Bubbles, red bile up my throat, rusty cheeks, crimson forehead. I look like I'm drunk on frustration. I bite down on the insides of my cheeks. Salt. Twitch eye, twitch, which is I pinpoint fingers pointing, <coughs> I can feel them hit each vertebrae, disconnecting my Lego spine, and crumbling me into jelly. I can't stand anymore. I can't breathe anymore. Squeeze lung pressure. Squeeze until my body turns to juice, so sour it repels everyone who dares to taste me. Sheena's words are always amazing. She's also a powerful singer. Together with close friends Steve, Shadow, and Kristen, she created Sister Sheena and the Shadow Puppet. Eric Williams is a comic, who we in Pittsburgh forgive for hailing from Cleveland, Ohio. He acts and writes with a local film group called Falling October Productions. He hosts an open mic at the Brookline Teen Outreach monthly. And he's been known to play a guitar or piano during his shows. Also known as the Fearsome Koala, here's Eric Williams. The group Halloween costume for the first time this past year. Uh, me and some friends did Scooby in the game, Son Scooby. As you guys can probably guess, I was Velma. And, uh, no, I, I was Shaggy. Uh, when I learned about this, was I looked more like Shaggy than any grown man ever should. Because, uh, I had the full costume, like, you know, the red pants, the green shirt, the bloodshot eyes. And we show up to the party, and my friend Beth goes, Hey, look, you guys, it's Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Eric Williams. <laughs> it could have been worse, though. We could have gone as the Reservoir Dogs, and she would have been like, hey look, it's those guys from that Tarantino movie, and why the fuck is Shaggy dressed for court? <laughs> I sat down with Sheena and Eric at their home to talk to them about their performing. Sheena Carroll, um, I am a poet, a new spoken word, and I'm also a singer for a band, and I have done some modeling, but not for a while. I'm Eric Williams, and I'm a stand-up comedian. Well, I was in choir at a young age, and I did dance and everything. But like the big thing was when I started writing poetry in college, I joined the Slam Poetry Club, and it was kind of just mind-blowing. Like, wow, people are actually like listening to me, kind of thing. So I ended up using it as a really, really good outlet to kind of just like express my feelings. So a lot of the first poems that I started reading at slams and open mics were like really, really personal. And I've kind of like branched out from that. And singing has been like an on and off thing for years and it's just fun. Yeah. I flunked out of college. Uh, and I was like, oh man, I'm like, what do I want to do? And I was like, well, I, I like writing. And I was like, I'm kind of fun. So I picked up like some books about like writing scripts and stuff. And this one book was like, yeah, this will help you write scripts. And I picked it up, and it was like, okay, so we're going to tell you how to do stand-up comedy. But you probably want to put this book down, but keep reading, because stand-up comedy is a really good way to figure out if the jokes you write are actually funny. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. And then I just started down the path. And many beers and substances that I won't reveal later, it's still going on. Sometimes. Um, it took me...
me a long time to get over um, reading personal things, poetry-wise. Um, I'm a lot more com like comfortable and confident with that now. Singing, on the other hand, varies wildly every time I perform. Like sometimes I'll be like, I don't belong up here, and other times I'll just be like, the world is my stage. So like that is my confidence varies a lot, and maybe because I don't sing as much as I read my poetry, but I actually have a story from whenever I used to do ballet as a kid. Um, they, like, the parents and, like, the teachers were just stunned that I could just, like, go up there and do, like, solos and stuff in front of, in front of, like, a cathedral, like, audience and not seem to care. It's because I was really, like, trapped in the moment. And also because I didn't realize that I didn't need, I need that, I didn't realize that I needed glasses at the time, I couldn't see the audience. <laughs> so, like, I just felt like I was dancing all by myself. Like, I, there was, like, was not, like, one-on-one, -on -one, or, like, it was just close quarters. I would just kind of crumble. Now that I've gotten older, I love crowd reaction when I get it. I love the, the before and after, like, talking and adding a little context to the performance. So I try not to ramble too much. Um, talking to people afterwards, though, is always the best. Because, you know, I shared something with them that could be, like, really personal. And then to have people afterwards come up and share something about themselves to me that they, they related, like, that's really cool. So. Yeah, yeah. I know you're a fan of Richard Jenny, and uh, I believe he once said that if you break down, like, what a comedian is, is getting paid, like... Uh, for the most part, it's going to be like less than minimum wage when you throw in all the time that they like put into everything. Mm -hmm. But like that laughter, that laughter is a beautiful, is a beautiful thing. And not really. No. Yeah. I've not yet had to include it on my taxes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've, uh, I don't forward this, this to the IRS, but I've been occasionally paid, like. <laughs> Mine would just be a book deal. Honestly, like, I have no, um, unrealistic expectations about, like, my singing and modeling. What would make me really happy would be to be a published author, to have people actually have copies of my book, and then do reading where I have my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I'm working towards and what would like a pretty ideal thing would be would be touring colleges because that that is a a lucrative scene. I first met Joe at an open mic hosted by Cannon Coffee, a local coffee shop in my neighborhood. A master wordsmith, Joe is not a typical rapper. I come from a long line of nut balls. Mama got the say, papa got the cross. Grammy got the haze, me, I got the moss. Berg, why gotta run a berg like a lost cause? Affected by few, judged by many. It's all good though, sip your henny. Hating on me cause I'm friendly. Despite having every reason to be petty. Whoa, I'm even starting to sound like these cats. I gotta get back to my path. I can't keep acting like that. Why does everybody rap like this nowadays? Huh? Joe's creativity isn't just in his words. His videos are sick. Bull in the china shop, right at my flow, but tied a knot to the rope, gets ripped, tied one off and hope to quit. Best wishes, death visits the luckiest. The rest of us stuck in this fortune favors the funkiest. No parliament on my soul, I got my mojo back, posted up in the cul de sac, patiently waiting to attack. I go to bat for the ones who wounded the speaker. Those who know they should say something, too afraid to look weaker. Get in front of their people, our people, please don't let these fucks steal your piece or your piece of the pie. Nine millimeter, drive by enemy. Having just returned from a cross country pilgrimage to the land of golden sidewalks, Hollywood, California. Joe Brave Pittsburgh Rain to talk. Uh, my name is Joseph Aaron Long, and I do hip hop technically. That's okay. Whatever, however you see it, you know. Yeah. You can describe it out a little bit if you want to explain. Uh, what, what I call it, I do hip honesty. Uh, I try to like rap about actual things and not just like participate in the pissing match that is the majority of hip-hop it seems like to me anyways like started actually i think the first time i ever performed in front of people was at can and coffee wow. i'm pretty sure that was the first time well i had like i did like a play when i was a kid but um so i mean and i liked that but like other than that i just kind of rapped for friends or like freestyled 
you know, at school and stuff like that. I started rapping in middle school, so. Okay, cool. But I didn't start recording until 2011 and performing. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, I enjoy it a lot. It's like my favorite thing to do, but it's also like, I got like artist demons. Mm -hmm. So like, n it's never good enough. A every performance I've ever done, I've like watched it later and been like super critical of myself. Like, oh God, like look at how you move. And <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just like, I love it. And but it also causes me a lot of stress and anxiety just because I'm you know super critical of myself. And part of it is, yeah, obviously the attention, but it's but I feel like the because uh, I ha actually have something to say when I rap uh, where it's like just inside out, just here. This is what I'm working with. So I feel like it's it's really therapeutic for me. Yeah. Like more than anything, it's. It's like, okay, and especially if someone comes up to me afterwards and says that, like, what I did resonates with them, which isn't always the case, but then sometimes there'll be that one person, like, dude, like, you know, you can hear something like that, so it's like, that makes me feel really good, that at least I know I'm not crazy, as crazy <laughs> as I feel I am sometimes. No. No. Hasn't, no. That hasn't, well, uh, I made, like enough money to eat a few times <laughs> while street performing in Vegas. <laughs> but but like but like for that day like I'd like make a few bucks and to eat like mm -hmm. you know, rapping or singing uh Frank Sinatra on <laughs> Fremont. <laughs> so I mean I've done it that way. Yeah. But for shows no not yet. Well Grammys. Grammys. <laughs> Grammys would be an I made it moment. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Nomination or win. Even just a nomination. Nomination, like, yeah. Yeah, like I would be. Honestly, I don't even give a shit if I want <laughs> Just to be nominated, just to be there in the crowd, it's always been a dream of mine, for sure. I met Liz Victory when she was passing through an open mic while she was visiting from Erie. Now a permanent fixture at the Pittsburgh Art House, she performs music all over the city. And she hosts open mics at her home. What, me? Yeah, you yeah. Just like right beforehand. Right. Good enough. Now it's all awesome. Victory at the Crossroads, and she hosts a podcast called That Broadcast. She met with me right before hosting an open mic at Pints on Penn. Uh, Liz Victory, musician, guitarist, okay. songwriter. My friend. Your friend? <laughs> yeah. Uh, being absolutely relentless with me. <laughs> so... I, I remember uh, one of my friends with whom I wrote and then my first song, he he was trying to get me to do kick, kick, what is it, air kick? <laughs> yeah, Robert Jensen, he owns Basement Transmissions now, like the physical thing. It did start out as a record label in his basement, kind of literal. Um, but yeah, they would, they would tell me to perform and so I did. Yes. <laughs> Uh, for a lot of reasons. I do not feel I was naturally inclined to perform. This is something I chose to overcome. I, I chose this because it's challenging. 
Whereas there are things that I'm naturally good at and know that I'm good at. This is something I'm constantly working to improve. But part of that is because I love challenges and I also just really wanted to be a performer. I really wanted to play live music for as long as I can remember. I, I don't know who doesn't want to grow up and be a rock star. Like that's yeah. the thing. So that's what I've always wanted to. Like yeah. a childhood dream. That's such a difficult question because there are so many great aspects of it. Overcoming the challenge is a big part of it. Um, and I guess the, the audience would, would maybe be the number one reason because I want to connect with people and I really want to start conversations with people and give people ideas and give them hope. That's the really, really big mission that I have. Pretty much everything that I do, be it art or not art, this passion to give people hope. I think because I spent so much of my life hopeless, so I don't. I really don't want other people to ever feel the the depths of bad that I felt. Uh, there's not enough to feed myself and put a roof over my head at current, but that is the goal. Uh, I've gotten some. I've gotten some good opportunities that are coming up over the summer that might get me pushed in that direction that I'm hoping will work out because I'm at a point right now where uh, when I see 9 to 5 jobs, I want them because I want stability and security, but I don't have like a family right now to take care of and I'm physically capable of still beating myself up to a degree. So as long as I can, you know, kind of be hungry and live in substandard housing, <laughs> I'll ride the wave. Yeah. Um, blue collar touring artist, so just on the road all the time performing. I've told a lot of people that um, my goal or, or how far I want to get would be Madison Square Garden, but I wouldn't want to stop there. Yeah. That would just be like another, like stop on the never-ending perpetual tour. Okay. So now that I've asked everyone, what does it all mean? Monday mornings are now so sweet. I like communicating with people a lot. And I think if I didn't perform, uh, I would like corner people with diatribes a lot more often. Um, I've never not so, I don't know, I found that the one place that I am most comfortable and most me is when I'm on stage. And it's, um, it's a part of me since kindergarten, so I just can't seem to let it go. Why not? <laughs> I mean, eventually all of humanity, including us, will die. Like, we only have so much time on here, and there are things we must do to, like, pass our time. Life can be unpleasant and full of bad things. Why not figure out a way to express yourself in a productive manner that, like, makes you feel good and positive? Like, plus laughter. And, like, occasionally someone may be like, that was really good. Will you have sex with me? So, like, there's a lot of reasons. How do I perform? Because it gives me a voice, because it makes me happy, and because I may die tomorrow or 70 years from now, but those experiences and my performances will still be there. Awesome. Uh, two reasons. The attention, um, you know, attention seeking validation seeking. I won't lie. People, that's the thing. People are like, I do this because, you know, like, fucking, if we didn't care, we would just, like, keep it to ourselves and, like, sit in the shower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I want, I want that, and then, but then at the same time, too, I, in hopes that someone in the audience, because what I do is weird. It, like, a lot of my rap is kind of, like, he, like, heady and, like, you had to like have at least tried acid to kind of get it, you know. <laughs> so, in in hopes that at least one person in the crowd will be like, oh, fuck, that's what I've been waiting for is like, you know. Uh, perform for the people to make a connection, to share hope and spread messages and dreams. Super.
Lots 